Hey, so I can Ooh, I'm see. recording. Oh, hello, guys. Right. Hello, Megan. Hello. Okay, well, it looks like some people are getting on, so that's good. Perfect. Hi, Mel in New Zealand. I see you down there. Perfect. Hello, Mel. I'm trying to think of my Kiwi hello, but it's, I, it's too late. And I was going to say aloha, but that's Hawaiian. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that. <laughs> Kiora, awesome. Kiora, there we go. Oh, there you go. Yes, there you go. got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well, we'll just go ahead. I know some other people are jumping on. There's my Lisa Marie from Quebec. Hey, sweetheart. Um, Bonjour, Lisa. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and start, and people will just pop on. And you, you said you already started the recording, right? It is now officially recording. Perfect. Okay. Let me just open up my message with you because that is where my content lies. Perfect. Okay. So thank you so much for doing this, Scott. Um, this is awesome. Um, You're most welcome. I love, I love talking about what we're going to talk about because, yeah, motivation. We're going to talk about motiv motivation, you guys, and we're going to hear about Scott and Alexander's story. And um, I've got some really good questions after he shares his story. Um, but it's a topic that you pretty much need to survive in direct sales. Um, it, it's, a, it's an area of direct sales that if you don't have motivation and drive, then sorry, but uh, maybe some time to head somewhere else. It's just, it's just absolutely key. That was rude to say, oh, Ryan's calling. Sorry, Ryan, can't talk right now. Um, it's just key. It is, it is hand in hand with what you do with this business. So I'm excited to talk about it. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, Scott and Alexander before um, we get into the topic though, because they have a really, really cool story. Um, let me just scroll through my messages. Um, Okie dokie. Okay. So this is a little bit about Scott and Alexander. So they currently live Alexandra. Sorry. She probably hates okay. that. <laughs> She does, but she's upstairs. That's okay. <laughs> okay, that she didn't. That's her fault for not listening. <laughs> you snooze, you lose, Alexandra. That's right. Okay, so they live in Spain. What is the name of your town that you live in? We live in Javier. So we live on the Costa Blanca. Ooh, and you're close to the water, right? We are. We can see the water from our house. How cool is that? Dreamy. Stinking dreamy. I can see snow from my house. Only so if you're my height, though. If you're under six foot eight, you might have to get on a stool and look at it. That's the only okay. thing. Okay, fair but enough. working on the, the smaller people can see it, too. We're working on that one. We're working <laughs> on that. Okay. Um, so, they, yeah, they're in Spain, and they have um, a house that they just purchased within the last year or so. Um, we purchased it about 18 months ago, and we ran it, finished renovated it in January. Awesome. And they did this straight out with uh, all because of their Sensi business. So thank you, Sensi. Yep, um, thank you very much. A third income disclosure statement. <laughs> it's down below, guys. <laughs> yep. We have traveled. Okay, so they have traveled. Um, okay, so this is crazy. On an average of a different country per month in the last three years, all because of their Sensi business. Isn't that wild? And they're four-year-old, so they've got a darling little redhead beautiful girl named Thea. Um, their four-year-old has traveled with them as well, and they, she has been on over 200 flights. So that's wild. Who, who can say that about their little kid? <laughs> that's crazy. Pretty crazy, hey? Amazing opportunity for her, my goodness. Um, okay, so their business, what does their business look like? So their group size, so everyone in there, including their entire downline, it is almost 2,000 people, which is insane. They have 11 frontline directors and above. 11 meaning that they have personally sponsored them or it's their first generation so there's no other director in between them and them them and scott and alexandra um and they have consultants represented in five different countries so australia new zealand france uk and ireland so we need to get you some canadians next we do have some canadians um they will be our directors we have we did have a canadian director but she slipped off but we do have a few canadians okay well you then you have six countries we have six countries, yeah. I mean, I mean five frontline directors is in there from those countries. Different countries as on our frontline, on our front line, if you know what I mean. Gotcha. Okay. Well, the Canadians, I think, are in the third gen. Ah, gotcha. Good place to be. Good, nice place to be. And I'm going to talk about <laughs> that too. <laughs> um, they joined Sensi seven years ago and um, at four years ago at the age of 29. So, Scott, that's you, right? I know I look seriously old, but yeah, I'm only 33. That's crazy. Um, 
he said that he was able to give up um, my full-time business to work um, since he alongside his partner, Alexandra, full-time and live a life of freedom. Doesn't that sound awesome? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, and they it, totally are. And it does sound awesome, but I will be absolutely honest with everybody who's watching this. You know, when I talk about that, or Megan talks about that, or Megan talks about her story, or other people talk about their story, people think, did they go to sleep and then, like, wake up successful? And I we talk about it, but people don't really understand the scars and the batters and the bruises you get in between that. So we, we do live a life of freedom, but we've been doing this for seven years, but it was four years of thinking, really hard work and commitment, which got us Major here. grind, 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 grind. When okay. everyone else is watching Netflix and chilling, you're grinding. <laughs> you're, yeah, geez, get off Netflix. Geez, I don't even know what that, when that was born, we were working our business, guys, geez. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, do you want me to just swing right into it, Megan? Yeah, tell us more. We do have questions, you guys. So Lisa Marie, I can see your questions on the side. So we should, how about we'll do the content and then we'll do the questions after Scott does his part. He's going to tell us, he's going to get right into some really good stuff. He's going to tell us more about their story. Um, so let's, we'll do questions after if that's okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Hello. Yeah, feel free to ask me any questions you May want. Hey, Hello, let me, so I, I hate doing this. I always feel rude doing this, but I am going to mute you, but then I will unmute you at the end. I always hate doing this. I don't want to mute you, but unfortunately, <laughs> that's what it says. I wish it'd say, will you just turn me down? But anyway, I'm not going to tell too much of our story, and I'm going to tell a part of our story, and um, because our story's quite big. We've never really told our full story, because... Me and Alexandra are kind of like private people too, so we kind of keep it to ourselves. And like people like Becca Levi goes, you need to tell your full story. You need to tell your full story. And we're like, no way. Jeez, no, jeez. You'll have me on tears on the floor. And I'll be, you know, as Alexandra mops on my tears, I'll be mopping up her tears. So I want to tell you a bit about our story. Um, and it goes back to when I first met Alexandra, it would have been 11 years ago. And me and Alexandra are total opposites. I, which is a good thing, okay? Alexandra is 11 years older than me, um, so and she has a corporate background. She hates me saying that. It's never a gentleman to... Now you know my age, you must know her age. So it's never a good gentleman to disclose his lady's age. So my apologies, Alexandra. But she's 11 years older than me, and we met when I was 21, and she was 33, 32. And I was always a bit of a... You know, I, I'm very chilled out. I kind of... Left school at 16, played competitive sport, and just really laid back where Alexandra went to school, got a degree, and her job was a big thing for her. Titles, the family she came from, was a, it was a big thing for them, which is for most people. Um, so she was in work, and she came home one day. We only been together about six months, and she was just complaining about her job. And this was the big thing in Alexandra's life. You know, it was, she got a degree, she spent five years in school, she worked really hard, and her job, she had a company car, and it was, you know, it was great for her. And so I said to her, if you're moaning so much, you should just go away and just quit. And she looked at me, like, is this 21-year-old year old kid serious? I've worked five years for this, I've got my company car outside, I'm getting a nice paycheck in the bank account, and he's telling me to quit, quit. What planet does he live on? Well, anyway, she didn't quit then. A few months later, I had the opportunity to travel to Ireland. And from that journey in Ireland, I had the opportunity to re travel to New Zealand too, to play rugby. And of course, I invited Alexander along with me. And it was very much out of a comfort zone. But the in thing back then was... Um, to take a career break. So Alexandra decided to take a career break for a year, come and spend some time, good, valuable time with me, come traveling, come and watch me play rugby. You know, what, what's the word? We call it a wag, live the life of a wag for a year. Mm -hmm. um, so she did that and we went to Ireland. We traveled around New Zealand. We lived in New Zealand for a few months and we came back to Ireland and the plan was for Alexandra to go and find a job. And we were sat in this real greasy cafe I remember it because I shouldn't have been eating it. Um, and we'd eaten this real greasy burger. So I looked at Alexandra and I said to her, so is it about time you went out and got yourself a job? And she looked at me, the same look she gave me 
when um, I suggested she quit her job. I'm like, geez, what's coming now? She goes, are you for real? She goes, I'm loving this life we're living. I want to, I do want to have my own business and I want to have my own independence and I, I want to have my own contribution, but I want to live this type of life where it's flexible. Um, it, it's flexible. It allows us to travel. It supports our family, but we can also work together. And this is way before, Sensi probably just launched in the US when we had this chat. And so since he was not knocking on our door, probably for three years after this chat. So we went away, you know, I carried on playing rugby. Alexander set up her own fair trade business, the center business. We cut our, cut our story short. We, Alexander's business went out of business. It went really well. And then it went out of business. And my business was doing well. And I quit playing rugby. And then my business went bump. And lo and behold, on our doorstep was this, Wickless candle product. Um, and we were like, that's all we, you know, there was a time when all we, we, when my business finally went bump, and I'm not going to tell my story too much because it will take forever. We looked at our bank balance and we could afford to pay for a house rent. We could afford to pay, um, there we go. We could afford to pay our house rent. We could afford to pay the bills, but we couldn't afford to put food on the table. So just let me pull. There we go. One second. There we go. That's better. And we couldn't afford to put the food on the table. So we got support of the St. Vincent de Paul. I don't know if you guys have it in Canada. And they gave us food vouchers for two months. And we looked at our sensory business. And even though it was doing all right, it wasn't, you know, we set a goal for our sensory business to pay for our rent, pay for our, pay for our bills, and also put food on the table and also pay back the Vinnies. And after two months, we managed to achieve that goal. And really, there was no looking back. But like I said to Megan, we didn't just fall asleep that night and, you know, wake up successful the next day. We actually had four years, three years of probably eating baked beans and really budgeting hard. And then we got to where we are today. And I'm normally really fresh, but it's this time of night. So... That is kind of like a success story. And if you listen to Megan, that is a success story. And if you, Megan has a success story. Many people have a success story, but many people in this business don't think they have a success story when they do, okay? In total in this business, there's like 50 paid at title superstar directors around that figure. And there's 120,000 consultants. That doesn't mean there's just 50 people with success stories. We all have a success story. Even if you just signed on the dotted line, you have a success story. And the thing is with where the world's going today, like people can no longer, there used to be a day where the husband could go out to work and the mum could stay at home and look after the kids. And that would, the husband's income would cover everything. That's just an average household. Unfortunately, that is not the case at the moment. People need extra income. We were in San Francisco and every Uber driver we spoke to, they needed an average 10,000 US dollars a month just to survive. 15,000 and they were just getting by nicely. 20,000, they had a few extras in life. So if you're only earning a couple of hundred dollars in your sensi business, don't feel down about yourself. You are a success story. Share that success story. There's, like I said, 50 people out of 120,000 people are paid superstar directors at Tile, okay? So if we keep going on, hey, look at ours and our great lifestyle, you know? We're not that relatable. Well, there's 119,950 people who, if you share your, what you've achieved in your business, you are relatable to other people. So don't ever hide your success story. And I'm going off target here, but that's what I was bringing in, okay? So anyway, so Alexander wanted this business which was flexible, one way we could work together, one way I could travel, and one which built a family. And we managed to do that, okay, with our Sensi business. Now, that is where I really want to talk to you guys about what this business can do for you and how, how simple what you have in front of you. Now, I like to call our Sensi business a million-dollar asset, okay? But I'm not allowed to call that to you guys because Alexander says that's the wrong language for Sensi people. So i got to call it a money-making machine. And it prints off your own notes if you work it really, really hard, okay? You can, you can build, when we talk about assets, we talk about our houses, we talk about, um, you know, commercial properties, 
you can build a business within Sensi that is it will pay you in one year the equal of what your house is worth. Yeah. I'm not being arrogant or big headed. I'm really not like that. But the income we've earned this year is more than our house is, which is worth right now. Okay. Income disclosure, disclaimer one. So you have for $139, whatever you pay for your care, an asset which you can really build for yourself. You have, as Alexander likes to call it, a money making machine. Okay. But it's not going to make you money if you don't do certain things. Now, being in direct sales, there's two main keys to becoming successful, okay? Megan touched on it earlier with one of them. The first one is the resources, okay? Now, I know for a fact in this business, you have so many resources, it's unbelievable. If Megan was just a terrible superstar director, you could blame her, that she never helps you. Guess what? Even though she's never like that. Guess what? You got everything on YouTube, You've got as much free content out there as possible. So you, we've got to wipe away the resources bit because we have it all in front of us. From Sensi, out of Sensi, Megan, your directors, your sponsor. But the second key to building a successful business is motivation. Okay? That is the key. You know, we don't need to have a desk. We don't need to build our own office. We don't need to be, you know, working 24 hours a day, we just need to be motivated. And we need to be motivated every single day, okay? And that is the key to your success. And when you get motivated, that's when you get unleashed. Sensi unleashed me and Alexander. We found our passion. We found what we like to do. And it motivated and it unleashed us as people. It's made us into the people we were made to be. Everybody on this whole planet has it inside of them to become successful. Okay, they just need to unleash themselves, and you have to do that by motivating yourself. Okay, and that can be hard. And I will share some tips how I get motivated. The way I get motivated is really simple. Everything in our business, all our systems are simple. They're so simple that a five year old could do it, that Thea could do it, because simple systems are also the key to your success. So it's time to get motivated. You have a multi-million dollar asset staring at you in the face, okay? You have a money-making machine. I'm not allowed to call it the asset. I'm tired. Jeez, it's late here. Alexander will tell me off. It's a money-making machine. You have a money-making machine staring at you in the face. And I'm going to tell you what I've talked about, the resources and what you have, but I haven't really gone into detail what you really, really do have in in this business, okay? Sensi, number one, is debt-free. It's a debt-free company. And debt free, the way I see debt free is from being debt free ourselves, like it's like you have no mortgage payment. The feeling you have when you don't have a mortgage payment, it feels pretty good. You don't, you own that house. If anything goes wrong, you own that house. If anything goes wrong, you got a roof over your head. And that's how I feel about Sensi. The only thing that could ever go wrong was Orville and Heidi sell out. And, you know, you've met them. They don't want to do that, you know? They are not the type of people. Sensi own absolutely everything within their company. Orville's a very smart man, okay, and Heidi is. And they own everything outright, which is their security, their family security, and all our security. So that is one worry we don't have. There's lots of direct sales companies out there who are in a lot of debt, who struggle and have to tinker with their compensation plan to make more money to keep afloat. We never have to do that. We own everything, not we. Sensi own everything outright. So there is no debt. So that's another thing you've got to think of. Sensi is debt free. It's like being mortgage free. We're in a $40 billion fragrance industry. Okay. Okay. There's bigger industries out there, but it's a $40 billion industry with very small competition. Now in your head, because we're Sensi consultants, you might think of other companies who I'm not going to talk about. You know, but that's because we're on the radar. But really, dive into the health product types. Thing. How many health products can you name out there? There's a new one which comes out every single week, you know? I can get health products for losing weight off my nose these days, yeah? So we are in a very small competition industry, which is worth $40 billion every single year, okay? That is a phenomenal amount, yeah? So... The next point I want to put off, we are also in a recession-proof 
business. Okay, there is two pe- two things people like to do in a recession. They like to buy candy and have nice fragrances. They are the two things which will never which thrive in a recession in a recession. Candy and fragrances. And what do we sell? We sell fragrances. We have built our business through a recession. And okay, it was, you know, it wasn't easy because we were first starting our business, but we still, the sales are still the same as they are now from some consultants. We are a million percent recession proof. So you always have to remember when a recession comes, growth happens. When a recession finishes, growth happens. When growth finishes, and it always finishes, recession comes. So it doesn't matter if there's growth, recession, growth, recession. We are always going to be there, okay? So that's another thing you don't have to worry about. We have the best compensation plan in the direct sales industry. And let me explain a bit about that. And I don't really like to talk too much in depth about the compensation plan because it can be complicated. I've got this weird brain where I can just work it out like that. Um, but I can't learn to learn a language like that. I don't know why I can just look at numbers and look at sheets and just know what it says. But lots of companies, why do we have the best compensation plan? Number one is because we can build unlimited width, okay? Where some companies you can only build like three front line. And then you have three legs and you only get paid on your weakest leg. So you've always got to make your two legs strong so you get a nice payoff your weakest leg. Your weakest leg might, you know, not be your weakest leg. So you can build unlimited width. You can basically write your own top, write your own paycheck off your top line. Okay. Also, so you can build unlimited width. We also get paid three generations down. For those who are directors and above, I'm kind of probably you probably know what I'm talking about. And you get the odd people, oh my god, we don't get paid four generations down. That's You know something? We're quite lucky to get paid three generations down. Okay? And the way our compensation plan works is you get paid more on your direct level the further down you go. Okay? So what does this create? This creates you building wide, which ultimately will bring you success in this business. But in order to really, 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 really pump your paycheck up, you've also got to go deep too. Where other companies will start off with so on a first generation director, you get 3% if you're a superstar director. On the second gen, you get fourth. On the third, you get 5%. Okay, so three, four, five. But other companies switch it round. So you'll get 5% on your first, 4% on your second, and 3% on the third. Okay, and what does this generate? It generates nice income to start with. So it kind of like sucks people in because they're earning more income because they're getting 5%. But it's not encouraging them to produce leaders because ultimately you don't want to lose money. You don't want to rob yourself. So it's discouraging people to produce leaders. And no matter how wide you go, it's still, you're going to lose money eventually. But you're going to get a nice paycheck. You're going to get a bigger paycheck in one of those companies than you are with Sensi at the beginning. But long term, it's going to, you, you, can't ever, you can't ever take a back seat. You've always got to be on the ball, which is good but it's also not secure. So the Sensi system is, and it's not just in my opinion, it is the best around. We were in Orlando a few weeks ago, and Becca won't mind me using her, her as an example. So we were talking with another guy who turned over in his direct sales business 100 million a year. And Becca's group size is 13,000. So she shared with him how much she earned with her group of 13,000. And he said, wow, to be able to earn that in his group, you'd have to have a group of 30,000. So as you can see, we have the best compensation plan in the business. And he, and he thought he had a good compensation plan. And we really do. And I've actually studied it. I've actually studied other companies. I did come into this and I go, Alexander, there's no residual income. You know, there's none of those like bonus paychecks, blah, 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 which other companies have. But then overall, we still would get paid more than that. Okay. So that is why we have the best compensation plan. My next point is 
we have not even touched the global global expansion the two biggest direct sales markets in the world are not the usa sorry guys oh no you're canadian oh you can be happy about that or canada or australia or new zealand they are asia and europe and in europe we're opening the united kingdom france spain germany austria ireland We've not even touched the surface yet, okay? So what you guys have in front of you is a massive opportunity. An opportunity where you can take full advantage. If you, it doesn't matter if you've been in five years and you've just in cruise control, and you're in gear one. If you wanna take it up to gear five, you can do, okay? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if you've been doing it for a week and you, know, you don't know where you are, you can take it up to give five if you want. I will tell you right now, me and Alexandra personally don't know anyone in Asia. Megan, I don't, I, I could tell you something about Megan. Megan probably doesn't know anyone in Asia, but when since he launches in Asia, we will know people. Yeah. It's not about, it's about your mentality. You know, it's not a, like we did not have a clue while we're building our business, how we were going to build our business. We just knew we would build it and it all fell into place. Yeah. I don't know how it works. I'm not into hocus pocus, but if you have a positive mental attitude that you will make it happen, it will happen. So if you really want to take your business to the next level, you can. Yeah, this is a simple business. We have the resources, we have the best compensation plan on the planet, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a sensei consultant. We are debt free. We're in a low competition market when it comes to fragrances and we're nowhere near global expansion, okay? So now is the time to unleash you, okay? Now is the time for you to go out there and show other people what you can do. You're in a business where we get unlimited recognition. We get recognition for just turning up a post box sometimes, you know? Do you ever get that in a job? You're in such a great community of people who cheer you on not just in your group, but in your whole global team. If you really want to make your sense of business work, if you really want to build a life-changing asset for you, your family, then you're in the right business. But you've got to work it. You've got to be motivated daily. You've got to be consistent. You've got to learn. You've got to put into action what you learn. You will never, ever, ever, you'll never, ever, and my head, I say things back to front when I'm a bit tired, it's late here. But you only earn, you will never exceed, your paycheck will never exceed you, okay? So you need, more you learn, the more you will earn, okay? And that's why I like doing calls for people. I do, I try and do videos all the time because the way, the way I see our business is, so I like to take in information. And it's like when you've been naughty at school and you've got to go home and tell your mom. And once you've told your mom, you feel good. So I like to offload all my information so I can take more information in, okay? So I can say, oh, Zoom just offered me a gift. So I can take more information in. That's what, I, that's what I like. And you've got to go out there and you've got to learn. And if you put in the time, the effort, the energy, and it's not a 20, you know, I, people say, oh, you work this business full time. I'm like, well, I guess so, because it's my only income, but, do I, I don't really work it. I work it smartly, but I don't work it full time. You know, if you work smart, you can achieve great results. The same results as Megan, the same results as anybody else in that top 50. Anybody can do this, but you've got to switch it on yourself. You have the best opportunity. You have the best platform ever. And all we are, all we are in this business, you know, our websites are done for us. Our warehouse is done for us. Everything's done for us. All we have to do is share the products. And share the opportunities and teach other people to do the same kind of really is that simple so that's kind of my you know little talk done um, but if you really want to make something happen in your business you can do it remember you are in control of your own million dollar asset don't have regrets make the most of it it is a great opportunity the best you'll ever have you might not think that. Sometimes I don't think that. And then I drive my kid to school with the mountains in the background. 
thinking of all the people I've met, going home to spend time with my best friend. And I know I'm part of the best opportunity I will ever have. So Megan is going to ask me some questions. And if anybody has it, I hope that was okay. That was perfect. That's got me all excited and fired up. (laughs) <laughs> you guys like it? I mean, you're getting the you're getting the perfection sign from Mel in New Zealand. So awesome! <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and I feel I'm just looking at my list of questions. You kind of covered um some of them um within your sharing just now, but I want to go back and we'll I'll ask them again because they're ones that I want to highlight for sure. Um, so the number one question that I want to know, and I think lots of these guys on here want to know, is how, so. How did you realize or come to know that Sensi, the Sensi business model slash comp plan was the best as you've been referring it to? And you kind of answered that, but so just give us a little, another an, a highlight reel for a second here on that. Okay, well, I kind of always knew it was the best conversation plan and um, because I, you know, I didn't, like me and Alexander are opposites. Like as soon as I saw the Sensi conversation plan, I had it sourced where it took her like two to three years to figure it out. So I kind of knew because I could look over companies' plans and I kind of knew and I knew we knew lots of other people. But then Alexander's like questioned it for the last six months. So when we were in Orlando the other week, I'm like, okay, well, we need to get, you know, Alexander's like, oh, you know, people getting on stage saying, oh, we've made a million in four years and blah, blah, blah. Well, they, they probably haven't. I'm not going to take, I don't know. I'm going to take that way. But I, Alexander's like, well, obviously that compensation plan's better, Scott. So we actually did a bit of research there. Like I said, we spoke to people and they said, no, most companies want to model themselves on our compensation plan. Like I said, there's companies out there who you can get easy money for two to three years and then they just go out of business. Okay. But ours is built for long. You might not earn as much money as some companies in the first year or two, but as you progress long term, you're part of a really good solid compensation plan. That's kind of what. That's kind of how I felt. And once we heard all that, Alexander's like, oh, my God, we do have the best compensation plan. And when that guy said to Becca, you know, they compared numbers and the earnings, and he's like, and he, he's like in the Hall of Fame, direct sales Hall of Fame. So he's not just some average consultant. He was like, wow, geez, you guys really do have a good compensation plan. But that was prompting him. So that's kind of how, how we know, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Perfect. So you've, you've done your research, which is really important. Yeah. Um, okay. Number two, what is it specifically about the Sensi products that you believe Sensi that set Sensi apart from other direct selling companies? Like, why do you think our problem, why are we, why are we better than most of them or all of them? <laughs> we are better than all of them. Well, no, there is some good competition on that. I quite like if you have a fragrance products, but obviously I'm loyal, but what I always say, you know, people always, not people always, some people go, you know, we could get a cheaper alternative. And that's great, you know. We have a quality product. Mm-hmm. And that is what I really like about Sensi. It's a quality product, which is simple. It's a simple, quality product. And if anybody ever does, here's a little sales tip for you. If anybody ever tells you it's expensive, I want you to agree with them. Agree with them. Because people love, be, you know, you see, you know, you see a sense consultant. Oh, that's expensive. So sense consultants come on and go, oh, no, it's not. Oh, my God, go and get your cheap candles. But when you agree with them, people actually have trust. But here's the little secret. When you agree with them, you say, yeah, I agree, Megan. That diffuser is pretty expensive. Sensi did, Sensi did want to make it, could have made it cheaper, but they just didn't want to rip you off. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. And when you say that, people go, oh, right. So he's agreed with me, but he's also told me his products are really good quality. So the quality of the products is something which attracts both me and Alexandra because I would rather lifetime warranty. Come on guys. Jeez. You know, that says it all. Yeah. Sorry. I've been that all day. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and the other fact too is, I mean, this is obvious one, but just the fact of it being consumable is a huge, um, a huge leg up because a lot of companies, you know, if you're selling, kitchenware pots and pans and spatulas like people don't really run out of a pot and a pan very often so um that's one thing too is i like to remind our consultants is like you are selling something that they're they need you for again in the near future it's it's most people need us more than uh um 
once every five years, you know, like you I have socks and pants since I've been married. I've been married for 17 years and we're still using some of the same pots and pans that I was given on our, for our wedding gifts. So I think that that would be a hard, um, you know, the pots and pans and kitchenware would be a hard thing to sell. And there are companies like that. So that's what I think also too, is obviously is we are creating something that people need often, which is huge. Yeah, and we've got a great product where kids can knock it over and people have to come get a new warmer too. I love that. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. We have a great product where people need top-ups. So yep. that's another great point. I love um, it. Perfect. Okay, my next question. So let's talk about motivation specifically. So there's a quote by Zig Ziglar, which I love. Um, he has some great quote quotes. But the quote that goes, um, it says, motivation doesn't last just like taking a bath. That's why it's recommended daily. And I love that. So um, and it's, I found definitely like motivation is definitely something that ebbs and flows, uh, depends on kind of what's going on in the rest of the world and life in your life and your relationship. Um, it, it, you know, it, it definitely doesn't, motivation isn't something that does this for everyone all the time, probably not, not many. Um, so what do you do? How do you keep your motivation consistent and, and revved up? Like, would you have some strategic things you do or is it belief or mindset or a bit of everything? I, I have. I have something which I do every single day and I do firmly believe that yeah, it ebbs and flows in the seven years we've been doing our, in our business. I've say I've been motivated pretty much 90% of the time, but I've lost direction sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I probably lost direction when we finished our house because that was like a goal for us. So from January to July, I kind of just went through the motions. Okay. But I re got my direction in July. But I do some simple things to get me motivated every single day. I know it works because when I don't do it, I have a mediocre day. So it's quite simple. I get up early in the morning. I get up before Thea. I get up before Alexandra. I get my phone. I get an audio. I don't touch Facebook. I don't touch social media. I get an audio. And as I get ready for the gym, I play the audio. Okay? It take, and the, what I do is I part the furthest away at night because we live in a Spanish town. So we don't have driveways like you guys. You have to park in a car park. So I park the furthest away, and it's about a five-minute walk. So as I'm walking to my car, I listen to my audio. It's about a five-minute drive to the gym, so I continue to listen to the audio. I put the audio down. I do a 20-minute workout. I don't spend hours in the gym. I do a 20-minute hit workout, hardcore, sweating, getting the blood pumping, feeling good. And then on the way home, I listen to the audio. On the walk from the car to the house, I listen to the audio, I put the audio down, and I'm ready for the rest of the day. Awesome. But I also have one other thing, and this is so vital for your business. And it might sound, I don't know if anyone's ever read the Beach Money, the book Beach Money. And this is where I refocus because we would have wrote our journal, and the kind of the end of our journals moved to Spain, buy a house in Spain, all right, blah, blah, blah. So that was kind of the end. So I kind of realized that I had to write a new book. So I've wrote a new book of what our next five years are going to look like. And it's one, two, three, four, five pages long. Probably takes about three minutes to read. I read it every single day. Okay, I tell a lie. Probably every other day on average. Okay? And that on itself, three minutes. It doesn't matter if I can't make it to the gym. Three minutes or do my, that just sets me on fire anyway. So write down what you want to do. People talk about vision boards, they're great. Have a vision board, they don't work for me. I have to write, I have to read it, I digest it, and I'm ready to go every single day when I do that. So that's kind of my secret, is just, I, I do the audio stuff, I always like to learn, I always like to self-develop, I always like to go to the gym. I can't go to the gym seven days a week, but five. I'm not going for a six pack, I just go pure for my business. I'm not got a six pack, guys, I'm, what, I'm about 10 pounds overweight. I just go purely for my business head and to feel good. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of really, that kind of, and I've got stuff in there in the next five years, which I really want to achieve. Like I've got personal stuff, what I want to achieve. I've got family stuff, which I want to achieve. And then I've got business goals, what I want to achieve. So what we want, and Alexandra has been through it and she's agreed with it. And she's added her stuff to it. So it's kind of like, it's like our Bible. And at the back, because one of our goals in the next 18 months is to recruit 150 people from July until next December. So 
I've got a number of 150 people and every time I get a recruit, I cross it off. And it's just little things like that. Like, you know, it's like, Alexander could buy me a Rolls Royce and park it outside. I'd probably get more excited for grabbing a pen and crossing off a recruit. You know, Mm -hmm. that's just little things like that really excite me. So that's why we do to know about it. Love it. So visualization is important. That's what I'm hearing too, is not just kind of wondering what you're going to do for work to work your business, but like literally needing to see it. And that's, that brings it from floating around back in the back part of the brain up to the front part where, you know, where, where, where it's in focus instead of fuzzy buried back somewhere. I wonder what I'm going to do thoughts. And I say, and my tip is write it. So if you read it at 10 PM, you wouldn't get to sleep at night. That's kind of my tip. Write it that it gets you so excited. It keeps you awake at night and then don't read it at night because it does actually keep you awake. So that is my tip with that. Yeah. Love that. Um, okay, so I'll move on to the next question. What does a day or week in the business life of Scott and Alexander look like? Okay, geez. Well, it's me and Alexander, we work together and we work really well together, but we probably work separately too. Like she would have her job. She would deal with the sales, customers, and bringing in, helping new people get started where I kind of deal with recruiting and then producing leaders. So I like to really hit it in the first three days. I like to get some really, really, the work out the way in the first three days. So on Monday, I do my power hour, which I've just talked about. You know, they're going to the gym. So get up at 6 a.m., home for 7, get Thea ready for school, take her to school. Okay? And then, sorry, I have a set jobs every single day, which it doesn't matter if I'm traveling or I'm abroad. or These are jobs, simple jobs, which can be done in half an hour. It doesn't matter where I am. What I'm doing, I get these jobs done, okay? And then I work on other jobs around that. That is just like, like the jobs include, I've got the, the list is over there, is it's include get at least one lead a day. If all goes wrong, I know I like to bring in five a day, that's the goal. But if all goes wrong, we're traveling or, you know, we're going to deal with fear in the school or something like that, I want to bring one lead in a day. We want to be following up with our previous leads, one video, checking with the team, and there's one more. So there are five jobs which I make sure we do every single day, no matter where we are, what we're doing. But when we are got a, a routine going, which we have right now, I like to front load Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Monday would be our team call, okay, which is at 10 a.m. on a Monday. And we do two Zooms a month, and we do we just start to do two opportunity events a month too. So Zoom call, and then I would try – maybe tinker with some social media, et cetera, et cetera. Tuesday is all about potential leaders. So I have my diary, which is over there. Tomorrow, I've got about eight Zoom calls. I try and keep them 20 minutes long with star consultants who are above, who are motivated to build their business. So from nine o'clock to about one o'clock, with a little break in between, I'll be speaking to potential leaders, go out for a bit of lunch, and maybe just chase up a few leads in the afternoon. So basically a hard morning. Wednesday is all about catching up with directors and above, um, seeing where they are, a few Zooms with them, Zooms with the ones who are doing, not with the ones who are coasting, you know? Zooms with the, the workers because you got 20 minutes and you want to put in 20 minutes with those people. And then Thursday, Friday, social media, working on YouTube, working on our Instagram, just the bit, bits and pieces. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll, I'll, there's no routine to Alexander because someone ever wants to meet for a sip of sniff here or a bar of basket going out here. So there's no really routine to Alexander, but that's my routine. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, pick up the pieces, Friday day off, um, doing that one hour, which I say that a small job. Saturday, Sunday, um, I work while Alexander goes to dance with Thea. And then afternoon off, Sunday off, family day, but obviously do my one hour. Make sure you get your one hour in consistently, no matter what day of the week it is. Get up early before your kids. You know what's one hour to put into your life for your future? You know, Get used to getting up early. Don't take the day off on Sunday. Just get up early. Have a lie-in on Sunday. Have a lie-in until 7 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock, but get up early. That's kind of my mm-hmm. tip. Yeah, awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, all righty. Last question. What would you say to new consultants that want to maximize their opportunity and grow their sensi business? Um, it's a famous Mary Christensen quote. Sales are the income for today. Pies are the income for tomorrow. 
and recruit is the income for a lifetime. What I would say is, is that you've got two skills to learn in this business and that's how to sell the product, but also how to sell the opportunity. And if you really want to build a big business with Sensi, you need to build wide, consistently. Every Wide means lots of front line. Lots Those of front line. Yeah. Lots of front line. But you need to have a view, and I've done quite a few recruiting calls, so I won't go too much into it. But it's, you're not recruiting what you don't encourage people to recruit wide for them. You recruit, encourage people to build wide so they can help other people build a business. And that's kind of something I really like to stress to people. I'm not building wide, so I've got my goals here. I'm not Mother Teresa. I've got goals. I'm going to smash those goals. We want to smash those goals. Okay? But ultimately, if I want to smash those goals and we want to smash those goals, we've got to help other people smash their goals. So I've got to forget about me, you know? So when you're recruiting, forget about yourself, okay? Put your thought into building a big top line. And as I said at the beginning of the call, because many people leave, you know, someone saying, oh, someone said, oh, I spoke to this recruiter today. I told about you and Alexandra living the dream, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, don't talk about us and living the dream, okay? Because a lot of people out there just want a couple of hundred pounds or hundred dollars in their bank every single month. And let me tell you what happens when that happens. They get a couple hundred dollars. They smile. They like it. They spend that $200. They want $300. They do the same. They want $500. They want $1,000. Next minute, they want $10,000. That's the way this business works. We have to start at the bottom of the stairs and work ourselves up. And it's got to make it all about them. So, yeah, sorry. I went off track there. So yeah, no, build, build wide, build wide and recruit from day one. That is the biggest mistake we made. We kept it the biggest secret ever. Me and Alexandra have this awesome product. And guess what? Nobody's going to know about it because we're going to keep it a secret. And we're not going to recruit anybody because, geez, they might take our customers in our area. We don't want that. No, that is totally wrong, guys. You want to be recruiting. You want to be recruiting your best customers. You want to be sharing the opportunity everywhere. And you don't want to be shy. You you. Like, I saw a post the other day, I can't remember, celebrities, they're out, you know, like, we've got this football in New York called Cristiano Ronaldo. He couldn't care less about a pair of underpants, but the people are paying him a lot of money, so he's posing in a pair of underpants. You know? If these celebrities are out there showing off their business, then so should we. You know, we have a great business, a great opportunity, and the best opportunities ever. So that's kind of my answer to that question. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I, I like to tell my consultants, like, the other thing, too, about recruiting and growing your team is um, often I see consultants, and I used to do this, too, I would make assumptions about other people, whether they would be interested or not about the business opportunity. I would make those assumptions for them. I'm like, oh, her husband already makes a lot of money. There's no way she'd be interested. Or she seems so busy. She's got all these kids and involved in everything, so she wouldn't be interested. So I would like whittle down my own opportunity because of my own wrong assumptions. So that's what I would say is don't sit here and think that you know what's going on for other people, right? Like that's because you're just cutting away your own opportunity if you're, you're knocking down your own potential list. So don't do that. Sometimes it's easier to do that because it might feel uncomfortable to approach that person, but you don't know what they need. They may need friendship or they may need something that makes them feel empowered. It might not be about money for them right away, why they would join, but don't, um, don't, don't assume for other people that you know if this business is good for them or not. That's another thing that I would definitely and, say. And I'd like to add to that too. Sometimes like the big thing is like you mentioned the star, our 11 frontline directors. So that's 11 people on our frontline who are direct and above. We personally recruited two of them. So, I mean, I, it's not who it's like, for example, this morning, Alexandra's like, I've got this potential recruit, and she's like talking like a swearing language. And Alexandra's like, I don't think she's suitable. But then I said to Alexandra, but you've got this friend on Facebook who's always swearing. You know, she could join up if she joined up and posted on there. And then you said, oh, I'll join. You know, we could, we could find another one. So never judge a book by its cover. And like I said, nine out of our 11 frontline directors have not been personally recruited by us. Yeah. So... It's not about the person sometimes. It's about who they can bring in. It's about who they know. Absolutely. So that's kind of another one. And Lisa, so going back to the question, Lisa did ask, she said, how long did it take you to get your first recruit? So when did you click in from 
being a seller to a sponsor? Um, it was a total fluke. I think it was like two weeks. Um, we got this lady who just said, I've joined. And Alexander said, oh my God, I've got a joiner. And then next week she goes, oh my God, what do I do with the joiner? You know, it was kind of like, it was kind of a fluke. Um, she was a 65-year-old lady at the time. We're still friends now. She's not in the business. And then we got a recruit a couple of weeks later who went on to actually do better than us at the start. Obviously, she's not in it anymore. But she went on to, like, overtake us. Um, so that was a bit, like, daunting. So we learned a lot of lessons early on. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a recruit and you're in Megan Clements' group, you, you don't have to worry about, you know, if you're new. Because there's going to be a big community of people there who are going to help you out too. So never worry about, never ever worry about supporting, you know. I, I'm kind of like, like Alexandra studies and has a degree, you know, and people like to study or, but I'm the type of person who likes to learn on the spot and learn from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. So take it by the scruff of the neck and just get on with it. And if you have any questions, go to Megan or go to your director and go, just say, hey, I'll be back to you in a minute. It's your recruit. Go and ask yeah. Megan. Go and ask your director. Don't be scared. Just get that's on with right. it and do it. Tell people. That's something I like to say to consultants is just tell them that's, that we're going to learn together. Yeah. Um, don't don't sell your, yourself short and say, oh, I don't know enough yet. That's, that's what Ed, the team, the whole, I mean, even the workstation actually has everything you really need on it. But Yes, that's, that's, I think a lot of consultants feel like they have to have enough time in the business or they have to know enough before they can start sponsoring. But I find new consultants are the most excited and the most passionate about the business. So catch it while the passion is ex and excitement is high and you're excited because the people are going to pick up on that vibe. So definitely if you're a new consultant, don't feel shy about asking other people if they'd be interested in it. Um, just because of you due to your time into the company. If that makes and sense. What will probably happen is they'll probably be excited and motivated too. And that will probably push you on because you'll have the fear of what we had. Oh my God, I don't want to be overtaken. And so ultimately that'd be good too. So it's, it's a great, it's like a, it's like a jogging partner, you know, Absolutely. you want to keep you, you know, if you're going to go jogging on your own, you're never going to fulfill the speed of good if you've got a jogging partner. Oh my God, my no worries. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that's my dog just being nosy. <laughs> it's no worries. He's probably thinking, Megan, uh, that's not Ryan's voice. That's someone else's voice. No. <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Well, it looks like we've come. Um, I don't see any other questions, but thank you so much for your time. We've almost been an hour, so we'll definitely let you go. We know it's getting late for you over there. Um, you're welcome, Lucy. I hope you feel better. And what I'll do is I will give me half an hour and I will ask Alexandra if she will upload it to YouTube and I will share the link across. If that's good with you, Megan. That. Thank you so much. That okay. sounds perfect. Thank you for having me, guys. And um, enjoy the – one last thing, guys. You're probably all motivated now because you're making high sales. But if you really want to be successful in this business, the hard work starts when the cutoff comes. That's when you've got to dig deep. And that's when you really got to start chatting to people about the opportunity. That is kind of our biggest secret, you know. Don't go to rest. Don't work Christmas Day. And, you know, I'm not saying that, but that one little hour I talk about, make sure you put that in even when the sales cut off. It's vitally important. Trust me. I love that. Okay. Thank you very much for having me, Megan. Thank you so much, Scott. Have a good night. And I'll see you in Mexico. Okay. You will. Okay. Bye. See ya. Bye, everybody.